King Arthur, Legend of the Sword is a 2017 fantasy epic film directed by Guy Ritchie and written by Ritchie, Joby Harold and Lionel Wigram, loosely based on Arthurian legends. The film stars Charlie Hunnam as the title character, with Astrid Burgess Frisbee, Jaiman Hansu, Aidan Gillen, Jude Law and Eric Bana in supporting roles. King Arthur premiered at the Grauman's Chinese Theater on May 8, 2017, and was theatrically released on May 12, 2017 in the United States and May 19, 2017 in the United Kingdom. In 2D and real 3D, the film received generally negative reviews from critics and was a box office bomb, grossing $15.4 million in its U.S. opening weekend. It is projected to lose at least $150 million. Equals equals plot edit equals equals. Mordred, an iron-fisted warlock, and his armies lay siege to Camelot, seeking to establish the dominance of magic-wielding mages over humankind. Uther Pendragon, king of the Britons, infiltrates Mordred's lair and beheads him, destroying his forces and saving. Camelot. Later that evening, Ether's treacherous brother Vortigern, who covets the throne, orchestrates a coup and sacrifices his wife Elsa to see witches in order to summon a demon knight, who kills Ether's wife and slays him in combat. The only survivor is Ether's son, who drifts away in a boat and eventually winds up in Londinium, where he is found and raised by prostitutes, who name him Arthur. Arthur grows into a skilled fighter and man of the streets, alongside his friends Tristan and Backlack. The three confront a group of Vikings headed by Kjartan, who had mistreated one of the prostitutes prostitutes, forcing them to pay her a year's wages for their behavior. Afterwards, the brothel is raided by the Blacklegs, Vortigern's minions, and Arthur learns that the Vikings were guests of the king in attacking them, therefore, constitutes a crime against him personally. Arthur tries to escape the city, but is caught and put on a ship with hundreds of other men. He learns that a mysterious, magic sword has appeared near Vortigern's castle, and the Blacklegs have been forcing all men of Arthur's age to try and pull it from the surrounding stone. When Arthur tries, he pulls the sword out and quickly faints from the vast power it contains. Vortigern meets with him in the dungeon, revealing his true lineage. Meanwhile, a woman, identifying herself as an acolyte of Merlin, meets with Uther's former general, Sir Bedivere. At Arthur's execution, the mage uses her magic to stage a diversion while Percival and Rubio, two of Bedivere's men, rescue Arthur. Taken to his hideout, Arthur initially refuses to help them, but soon collapses again when he tries to wield the sword. Suspecting that he lacks the willpower to control it, the mage persuades Bedivere to take take Arthur to the Blacklands, the realm where, years earlier, Merlin destroyed Mordred's tower in defiance of his darkness. It is revealed that Vortigern was responsible for persuading Mordred to rebel against humanity, having grown jealous of Uther's power. Arthur, having restored the sword's magic, returns determined to destroy Vortigern for his crimes. Together with his friends and Bedivere's men, Arthur stages a series of ambushes and attacks to force Vortigern out of hiding. Aware that his mate is a spy for Bedivere, Vortigern announces plans to meet with his barons in Londonium, sending a body double in his place. The rebels quickly realize the deception, but attack anyway which was all part of his plan. In the process, Rubio is captured while Backlack is severely wounded and left behind. The others take refuge in a fight as school, run by Arthur's mentor George, where they are quickly overrun by the Blacklegs. Seeing the mage being held at knife point, Arthur is overcome by his rage and unleashes Excalibur's potential, single-handedly killing all of the enemy soldiers. As night falls and riots break out all over Londonium, the rebels take shelter in a safe house, where they are soon joined by Backlack and his son Blue. Knowing that he is mortally wounded, Backlack urges the others to go on and promises that he will be coming after them soon. Unbeknownst to them, the Blacklegs commander, Mischief John, has been following the wounded Backlack, and he and Vortigern interrogate him for information. Blue sneaks back and, when caught, tries to bluff them that he is simply a worker coming to do his shift, but he can't maintain the masquerade when his father is threatened. Arthur comes back and manages to save Blue, but not before Blue Blue watches his father die. Afterwards, Arthur, ashamed of his failures, throws the sword into a lake and runs into the forest. When he stops at a small marsh, the Lady of the Lake pulls him into her realm and shows him a vision of the future, where England has been ruined by Vortigern's rule and the people are left to suffer in misery. Recognizing that only he can put an end to his uncle's reign, Arthur reunites with Bedivere, George, and Percival. When they return to the rebel hideout, however, they discover all of their allies dead, Vortigern having found them thanks to information provided by Ruby. They encounter the captain, who delivers a message from the king, if Arthur does not surrender himself by nightfall,
all, both the mage and blue will die. Bedivere is able to get the former released in exchange for Arthur surrendering both himself and the sword. Just as Vortigern is about to kill his nephew, a giant snake controlled by the mage attacks and devours the captain and his men, while the others free Vortigern's prisoners and lead them in a revolt against the Blacklegs. A desperate Vortigern sacrifices his only daughter and is transformed into the Demon Knight, confronting Arthur in a separate dimension. Despite his fighting skill, Arthur is quickly beaten. Just as he is about to submit, he witnesses a flashback of the moment when his father was struck down, having turned his own body to stone to prevent Vortigern from seizing the sword. Arthur snatches the sword before it impales Uther, who gives him the right to wield it. Arthur then destroys Vortigern's weapon and kills him violently. In the aftermath, Arthur, George, and Percival begin building the round table, where Arthur and his knights will meet. Arthur also dissolves Vortigern's pact with the Vikings, declaring that they must respect England's power if they wish to avoid war. Blue and the prostitutes arrive with the crown of Uther, which Arthur accepts. King Arthur then addresses his new subjects, holding the sword aloft in the air. Equals equals casted it equals equals. Charlie Hunnam as King Arthur, Ether's son, Vortigern's nephew and the would-be king of Camelot who was raised by prostitutes. Astrid Burgess Frisbee as the mage, a woman working for Merlin who supports Arthur and the resistance. Jaiman Hansu as Sir Bedivere, the leader of the resistance and a former knight of Uther. Aidan Gillen as Sir William Goose Fate Bill, and skilled archer, Bedivere's friend, former knight of Uther and member of the resistance. Kingsley Benadir as Sir Tristan Wetstick, Arthur and Backlack's childhood friend who is later turned into a knight by Bedivere. Craig McGinley as Sir Percival, a member of the resistance who is later turned into a knight by Bedivere. Tom Wu as Sir George, Arthur's mentor and a skilled fighter who helps the resistance and is later turned into a knight by Bedivere. Neil Maskell as Backlack, Arthur and Tristan's childhood friend and Blue's father, who helps the resistance. Freddie Fox as Rubio, a member of the resistance who later betrays them and helps Vortigern. Annabelle Wallace as Maggie, Vortigern's maid who helps the resistance. Blue Landau as Blue, Backlack's son. Michael Persbrandt as Greybeard, and Viking who has deals with Vortigern. Poppy Delavine as Agrain, Arthur's mother and Ether's wife. She is killed by Vortigern in the beginning of the film. Jude Law as Vortigern, Ether's brother, Elsa's husband. Keisha's father, Arthur's uncle and the tyrannical ruthless king of Mordred. Eric Bana as Uther Pendragon, Vortigern's brother, Arthur's father and the king of Britain. Camille Lemyshevsky, Jackie Ainsley and Rob Knighton portrays Merlin, the Lady of the Lake and Mordred, three important characters from the Arthurian mythology, respectively. Katie McGrath and Millie Brady portrays Vortigern's wife, Elsa, and daughter, Katia, respectively. David Beckham appears in a cameo. Lorraine Bruce, Aline Powell and Hermione Corfield appears as the three sirens. Michael McKellett and portrays Jack's eye, Arthur's scout on the kingdom. Nicola Wren portrays Lucy, the prostitute who raises Arthur. Equals equals production edit equals equals. In January 2014, Warner Brothers set Guy Ritchie to direct a new multi-film version of the King Arthur legend. The first film was to be titled Knights of the Round Table, King Arthur, with Lionel Wigram as producer and Joby Harold as screenwriter. It is the intended first installment of a planned six-film series. Equals 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 casting that equals equals equals. Idris Elba was in talks to play a Merlin-esque figure who trains and mentors Arthur. When Elba did not sign on to the film, the director continued to look for an actor to play the role. Charlie Hunnam, Ritchie's choice for the role, was cast to play King Arthur. Elizabeth Olsen was in talks for the female lead. However, on September 18, it was Astrid Burgess Frisbee who was cast to play Guinevere. On November 14, Jude Law was in talks to play the lead villain role in the film. On February 11, 2015, Eric Bana was added to the cast to play Uther, the father of King Arthur. Michael Persbrand joined the film on March 6, 2015 to play a villainous role. Equals 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 filming that equals equals equals. Filming in Windsor Great Park was underway in February 2015, then later in North Wales from March 2, 2015. Later on March 10, 2015, Ritchie tweeted a photo and confirmed the first day of shooting. In April 2015, filming took place in Snowdonia, where locations used were Tree Fan, Nant Gwynant near Bedgelert and Capel Carig. Early in July filming continued in the Shield Egg, Loch Torridon and Apple Cross areas of Wester Ross in the Scottish Highlands. One day of filming also took place at the Queering on the Isle of Skye. Filming also took place at Warner Brothers Studios, Leavesden. Equals equals release it at equals equals. The film was set for a July 22, 2016 release, but on December 21, 2015, Warner Brothers moved the date to February 17, 2017, alongside Maze Runner, The Death Cure. On January 21, 2016, Warner Brothers announced it would be pushed back again to March 24, 2017. The title was changed to King Arthur, Legend of the Sword in July 2016. In December 2016, the release was pushed back from its March 24th slot to May 12, 2017 
possibly so as not to compete with chips. Equals 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 promotion edit equals equals equals. The trailer was released on July 23, 2016, during the 2016 San Diego Comic Con and was attached to screenings of Mechanic, Resurrection, Don't Breathe, Shut In, and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It was originally planned for an IMAX release, as evident in the Comic Con trailer, but was cancelled due to it being postponed and only received non-IMAX presentations. The first extended TV spot was released on January 22, 2017, and was shown on the 2017 NFC Championship game on Fox Broadcasting Company between the Atlanta Falcons and the Green Bay Packers and the 2017 AFC Championship game on CBS between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. A second trailer was released on February 20, 2017 and was attached to Logan, Kong, Skull Island, Power Rangers and Ghost in the Shell. The third and final trailer was released on April 1, 2017 and was attached to The Fate of the Furious, The Lost City of Z, which also starred Hunnam, and Free Fire. All in all, Warner Brothers spent $135 million on marketing the film. The film was shown at select AMC theaters in a special preview on April 27, 2017, in a promotional event titled King for a Day. Demand for tickets led AMC to expand the event to 200 theaters. Equals equals reception edit equals 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 box office seated equals 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 as of may 21st 2017 King Arthur, Legend of the Sword has grossed $27.2 million in the United States and Canada and $66.2 million in other territories for a worldwide total of $93.4 million, against a production budget of $175 million. In North America, the film was released alongside Snatched and was initially projected to gross around $25 million from 3,702 theaters during its opening weekend. It made $1.15 million from Thursday night previews at about 3,200 theaters, but after making just $5.3 million on Friday, weekend projections were lowered to $15 million. It ended up debuting to $15.4 million, finishing third at the box office. Deadline.com noted that due to the film's $175 million production budget, as well as at least an additional $100 million spent on marketing, the film was destined to be a box office bomb. Regarding the cost of the film, the site quoted one finance expert as saying, make original IP into intellectual property for a cost-effective price. If it works then spend more if necessary on the sequel. King Arthur should have been done for $60 million $80 million. Warner Brothers had no reason to spend $175 million plus on this picture. Comparing its opening to cost, IndieWire called the film's failings historic. The Hollywood Reporter noted that the film will likely lose about $150 million. The film debuted at one in an estimated 29 countries, including Russia and Scandinavia, with markets to follow in the coming weeks including the origin of the film's plot, the United Kingdom, as well as France, South Korea and Australia. Over its opening weekend, it made $29.1 million more in other countries besides America, overall 51 countries. Equals 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 critical response seated equals equals equals. On review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 28 based on 185 reviews, and an average rating of 4.6. 10. The site's critical consensus reads, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword piles mounds of modern action flash on an age-old tale, and wipes out much of what made it a classic story in the first place. On Metacritic, which assigns a normalized rating, to film has a score 42 out of 100, based 44 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. On CinemaScore, audiences gave the film an average grade of B+, on an A+, to F scale, with 56 of the opening weekend film goers being under the age of 35, and 59 men. Writing for The Guardian, Peter Bradshaw gave the film a generally positive review stating, Guy Ritchie's cheerfully ridiculous Arthur is a gonzo monarch, a death metal warrior king. Ritchie's film is at all times over the top, crashing around its digital landscapes in all manner of berserkness, sometimes whooshing along, sometimes stuck in the odd narrative doldrum. In a negative review of the film for the Chicago Tribune, Michael Phillips questioned the long-term longevity of the projected and planned series of six Arthur films from Ritchie stating, I'm no businessman, but plans for a six-film franchise may be optimistic. Optimism is nowhere to be found in Ritchie's Ritchie's movie itself. It is a grim and stupid thing, from one of the world's most successful mediocre filmmakers, and if Shakespeare's King Lear were blogging today, he'd supply the blurb quote, nothing will come of nothing. She writes the film is, often good, occasionally, it's even pretty great. Equals equals references did equals 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 external links edit equals equals official website, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword at the Internet Movie Database, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword at Al Movie, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword at Box Office Mojo. 
King Arthur, Legend of the Sword at Film Affinity, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword at Metacritic, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword at Rotten Tomatoes.